Hello, I'm Ken Gould from the Virtualization Solutions Engineering Team within EMC's Global Solutions Centres. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move a virtual recover point appliance to a new host. Here we can see a fully functional virtualized recover point installation. Let's connect to one of the virtual RPAs using SSH. Once we have logged onto the appliance, we are going to go into the Diagnostics menu, then into the Fibre Channel Diagnostics menu, and then select Option 2 to view the Fibre Channel details. This will give us a list of the worldwide names currently used by this RPA, as generated when HPAs were assigned to this appliance. We are going to copy and paste these worldwide names out to a text file, so that we can use them again in a moment, the object being to hard code these worldwide names so that this RPA continues to use them when moved to a new host. Now we back up through the menus and go into the cluster operations menu and detach this RPA from the cluster. Then go back one level and enter the setup menu, selecting option 1 to modify, then option 2 in this case as we are changing an RPA on site 1, and then option 3 to modify the worldwide name slash port pair addresses. Select the relevant RPA and enter the number of HPA ports that it uses. Then copy and paste the worldwide name and node worldwide name details for each HPA port in sequence. Once complete, go back through the menu tree until we can see the apply option. We then see a summary of the configuration for the entire cluster, including the worldwide names we just entered. Confirm the change and select the site and box number that the changes should be applied to. Once these settings have successfully applied, go back through the menus to the Cluster Operations menu and reattach the RPA to the cluster. This will invoke a reboot of the RPA. After the reboot is complete, we can see that the Recover Point cluster is fully operational again, with all of the RPAs available. And now we are going to go through the process of moving that RPA to another host. The first thing to do is to shut down that RPA. In this case, we will do it cleanly from the console using option 5 and then option 2 to shut down the RPA, which of course wouldn't be necessary if the RPA had failed for some reason. Here we can see that the RPA is flagged as being offline, so let's just drag and drop the failed virtual RPA to another host, keeping the storage locations as they are. Now what we need to do is just remove the QLogic HPA devices assigned via VM Direct Path on the original host and assign some new ones in their place from those available on the new host. The final step is to power the virtual machine back on, the result being that the virtual RPA will come back up using the same worldwide names we hard-coded earlier, thereby retaining access to all of the relevant LUNs from the storage array without need for rezoning or remasking. Moving back to the recover point GUI, we can see it starting to refresh. First the management connectivity to the RPA is restored, followed by the WAN connectivity, and finally, the CX splitter in this case detects the presence of the moved RPA. Thanks for watching, and please look out for related videos on installing a virtual recover point cluster, replacing a virtual RPA, and using SRM with virtual RPAs.